Hi, Blood Talk fans. We are going to be talking about delusion today. It is a simple topic, but can be confusing at times. And shout out to these two subscribers for their suggestions on today's topic. Without further ado, let us get into it. Whenever I think of delusion, it is easier for me to think of delusions in an equation form. Solute plus solvent equals solution. Solute is a substance that is being dissolved or being diluted. Solvent. Solvent is a dissolving media or any liquid that you use to dilute, like distilled water, which is frequently used in laboratory setting. You may also hear the word diluent. A diluent is a substance that is used to dilute or dissolve the solute. Solution. Solution is the total volume. This is the bottom number when you write the dilution in fraction. A common mistake that I've seen people make is using the bottom number as the amount of solvent you need it. That is incorrect. The bottom number is a total volume. Remember that. The bottom number, total volume. Simple dilution. Let's say you are to dilute a patient's serum, 1 to 10. First write that in fractions, 1 over 10. I said the bottom number is the total volume. From that, you'll see you will add 9 parts of distilled water and 1 part of patient's serum. When you add that together, you'll get a total volume of 10. And the concentrations in that tube is 1 to 10. There you go. You have done it. A simple dilution. Benefit and clinical applications of dilution. First, to extend the small sample volume. The benefits of dilution is only minimum volume needed. There is a problem that we face frequently in laboratory. Sometimes we get hard to replace samples such as spinal fluid, amniotic fluid, absence fluids from lungs or other tissues and organs. And that is when dilutions may be needed to ensure the sufficient sample for all the necessary tests. However, there is a limit to how far we can dilute because there is a minimum concentration requirement for each test and a minimum volume needed for each test. Second, to bring the high sample values down to a reportable range. This is when the patient test value is really high and go above the reportable range that the instruments had been calibrated for. When this happens, we dilute the patient samples and repeat the test. To bring down the test value to be in a reportable range, make sure that after the test results come out, we have to factor in the dilutions factor before reporting the final results. The next question is, how much do we dilute? It has to say because it depends on how high the patient test value went above the reportable range. I usually start diluting the sample in half, and that usually does the trick. Side note, check the manufacturer for an allowable diluent. Some tests will have you dilute with distilled water, some tests will have you dilute it with reagent water, and some tests you need to dilute with the test reagent. Wrong diluent use will lead to wrong test results and test error, and that would be a delay in patient care. Serial dilutions. A serial dilution is Simple dilutions done multiple times. Let's work on an example and find out what the concentration is on each tube. Problem. We have 20 microliter of patient samples. The test value is higher than the reportable range. Given we need to dilute the test three times and only use 10 microliter of patient serum. And the minimum volumes required for the test is 100 microliter. What are the final concentrations in each tube? Since you already know that you will need a total volume of 100 microliter, and it said that you can only use 10 microliter of the patient sample, so you write 10 over 100, and that would give you 1 to 10. The bottom number is the total volume. So that means you will need 90 microliter of diluent and 10 microliter of patient sample, which give you 1 to 10. Now, moving on to the second tube. So you're doing the same thing. 90 microliter of the diluent and 10 microliter of the solution from the first tube. 
Moving on to tube number three. You're doing exactly the same thing as you did for the first and the second tube, which is 90 microliter of the diluent and 10 microliter of the solutions from the previous tube. The dilution factor in this example is 10. So when you do the calculations to see the concentrations of each tube, you will multiply it by 10. So you will have 1 to 10 for the first tube, 1 to 100 for the second tube, and 1 to 1000 for the third tube. So your final tube have a concentration of 1 to 1000. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, or microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye!